managed table versus external table in databricks in 2025 hey okay, hi hello everyone i'm naval yamul welcome back to my youtube channel data master so in this video we will be discussing about what is managed table and what is external table in the terms of unity catalog when your workspace is enabled for the unity catalog uh, we will be seeing the difference between managed table and the external table if you have been using the databricks tables you will come across this word and if you are going for the interviews or if you are working on the projects definitely you will come across this managed table and external table in this video i am going to explain you in detail what are the differences between these two what are the different scenarios when to use it and also we are going to do some hands on creating some managed tables so managed tables and the external table is not a new concept in databricks we used to have this from so long when we have a hive meta store in the hive meta store we used to create a schemas and schemas are nothing but databases within the schemas we used to create a tables and the tables were of two types managed and external table but back then i mean with the databricks workspace which do not have the unity catalog or they are still using a legacy hive meta store so for them managed table was like the default location dbfs dbfs now we are not talking anything on the dbfs or even databricks uh, will not use that legacy hive meta store and the dbfs but now with the unity catalog enabled workspaces or if you are talking about the new workspaces the managed table definition is little bit different compared to the previous one so previously it was taking up the default location as dbfs but now it is taking up the default location of the meta store so if you have created a meta store account and if you have attached your workspaces to the meta store whatever the location of that meta store is so it takes up a default location if you are using your s3 behind the scene it's your cloud object storage only so it can be your s3 or it can be your adls in case of aws and azure so let me explain you about the differences between managed table and external table so before that uh, i would like to show you my catalog explorer so i am using a unity catalog enabled workspace i have one catalog i have created few minutes back uh, the catalog name is youtube i have other catalogs as well and i have a default schema like whenever you create a catalog by default you will get one database or you can simply call it as a schema and it's a default schema and you can check the details about this uh, the workspace permissions so if you want to create a tables or you want to create a schemas within it you need a permission you need a privilege to do that assuming that i am the owner of this workspace i am the admin of this workspace i am the owner of this catalog so i can create the tables i can drop the tables and so on okay if you are trying to do some hands-on on your workspace databricks enabled uh, unity catalog enabled workspace so please make sure that you have a right permissions to create a schemas to create a databases and to create uh, tables within that and even you get a permission to delete as well i mean drop the tables so make sure that you have a enough uh, you have a privileges to do all this so now let me get inside this and i'll just go to the default schema and if i check the default schema we have uh, details about the schemas and we have uh, assume, assuming that we have the permissions on this schema to create an objects in it so i'll be just explaining you the table what is table like if you ask me what is a table so in simple words table is which contains uh, records and fields like a columns and rows it's in a structured format so you have a column headers you have a data types and you have a records in it so i have a definition as well from the documentation databricks official documentation so a table which contains a rows of the table uh, rows of the data and when it comes to databricks tables by default databricks has a delta tables by default databricks says it's a delta table the format of the table is a delta lake or a delta format so what is delta lake so i have made a separate video on the delta lake or a delta lake playlist so you can check that i'll give you the link in this description 
So by default, all the tables in the Databricks are Delta tables by default. It can be your managed table or it can be your external table. People get confused here. Uh, like in the case of external table, can we create some other file formats? Yes, that is true. You can do it. But by default, you can, uh, by default, it creates a delta, but you can use other file formats as well. Okay. So whenever you are creating a table, like you can register that table or you can persist that table into your schema, your database. And behind the scene, you will get a lot of metadata. I'll call them as a delta logs. So that delta logs helps you to achieve the asset transactions that helps you to achieve this uh, transaction logs and so on. So where you are saving this logs, that is important. If you are creating a table without any keyword location, your metadata will be stored into the default location. Then we call it as a managed table. If you provide it explicitly mentioning that I want to store my metadata, I want to store all my uh, transaction logs at a cloud object like uh, S3 or ADLS, then in that case, it becomes an external table. I'll explain it. I'll make the thing simple. So uh, coming back, uh, tables are nothing but uh, a structured one which has rows and columns, which has a data and it stores under the schema. Okay. So let me go back to the notebook. So to create a managed table, we simply write a syntax, create table, table name. And you can define all your column headers and the data types. Simple. By default, it will be a delta table and it will take up a default location where your metadata or where your meta store is created. Okay. When it comes to external table, the syntax is similar, but you have to give an additional information like a location. Oh, where do you want to store your transaction logs? Where do you want to save it? So you have to provide a path for that. It can be your cloud object storage, your S3, your Google Cloud or your ADLS, anything. But make sure that if you are creating an external table, that object storage has to be mounted to the Databricks. Now we are not talking about the mount. We are talking about a Unity Catalogs object called external location and storage credential. So I have also made a separate video on the external location and storage credential. You can watch that. I'll give you the link on that. With the help, assuming that you have a connection to your cloud object, with the help of that connection, we can provide a location of that particular container or the bucket and all your metadata gets stored in that external location. It's external. So that's the reason why we call it as an external. Then coming back to the format. Uh, so by default, every time when you're creating a table behind the scene, it's a Delta table. The format of the table is a Delta. You get a metadata and all those things. But in the case of external table, by default, it is Delta. But apart from Delta, you can use other file formats as well. Like, oh, your table format can be CSV, your table format can be Parquet, can be JSON, can be Avro or anything. But if you are using the other file formats, you won't be able to achieve the transaction logs. So there are less guarantees that you get an asset transactions on top of that tables. So we recommend moving to the Delta. Even you can create an iceberg table format as well. But now I'll just stick to the delta. In the later videos, I'll be talking about the iceberg, like how we can create iceberg tables in the uh, Databricks. Now talking about the location. So by default, the table you create it without a keyword location, it will be managed table. Behind the scene, it's a delta table. The metadata that is getting stored is in the default storage location that is Unity Catalogs. Previously, I mean, couple of years back or without the Unity Catalog enabled workspaces, we used to say DBFS, but now it's not DBFS. It's a driver of ABFSS in the case of Azure and in the case of S3, it's an S3. So that is a default location. But in the case of external table, you have to explicitly mention it like it's in my ADLS or S3 and so on. Okay. 
this is default location and you have to explain it in the external table now let us try to do some hands-on and then come back to this table again okay so we'll discuss about prop behavior and what are the optimization techniques so i'll write a very simple query uh, it's use catalog catalog name so in my case i'm using a youtube catalog i have my compute up and running here now i'm going to create a table i'll be using a schema that is default schema and the table name is sample i am not providing any keyword location nothing like that i'll just try to run this and a table should be created with a name called sample it's done now it's done so i would like to show you a few things here first is come on i'll use a sql and i'll write a describe command here describe extended i'll go with extended i'll get all the detailed information about that particular table and i'll try to run this i want to show you a few things here uh, first is the format yeah it's a provided delta and if you look carefully the type of the table is manage table and if you look at the location so it is taking up the location of abfss drivers so i'm using an azure databricks here so it is taking up a meta store as a container name a storage account name and so on so somewhere in this container in this storage account a folder would be created with this name with this default name and all the metadata for this table will be saved here so when i say metadata it's something on the delta so if you are aware of delta well and good if not i'll give you the link i want you to watch that so whenever you are creating a table there will be a parquet files and there will be some delta logs in it okay so it's a managed table and if you look carefully uh, you can see there is something called optimization it's enabled by default because it is inherited from the catalog now i would like to show you the catalog explorer so whatever details we have checked you can see all them in the ui as well so you can check the columns you can go to the details tab it's a manage table it's a manage table and you can check the history so we have created a table using an operation called create table who has done this user id and all the other details okay so one thing it's a delta table you can see here it's a delta table now going back if i want to create an external table i would just simply mention this keyword location and i would mention the location here and then i would write using delta so if i write using delta so this will be a delta table i guess the syntax should be here using delta and then i'll provide a location if i do not mention this using delta by default it will be delta table but i can even use other file formats as well so which all format it supports so let me go back uh, i'll give you this documentation link as well you can see manage table external table i'll click on this and even you can create an external table using these file formats like delta csv json avro parquet orc text even text but there are a lot of benefits if you are moving it to the delta you get transaction logs uh, asset properties time travel so many features are there but still if you say that no i don't want all that fancy features i would stick to the parquet file format sure you can use parquet file format as well okay but what are the benefits of using a managed table uh, like in when it compare it to the external table are there any benefits so let me talk about the benefits now i'll go back to my notebook so the first benefit is the drop so we'll try to understand what is drop now if you're dropping a table in simple words your table from the catalog or from the schema is removed it's dropped actually and your metadata everything gets deleted so all your transaction logs everything will be removed in the case of dropping the table but in the case of external table there is a benefit uh, try to understand it's an external table because all your metadata is storing at your location external location if you are dropping a table only the table is dropped from the catalog or from the schema but all your metadata remains in the external location 
it remains there so again that was a benefit you would say because accidentally if i drop a table and you should still have all the logs so can we retrieve that data back can we roll back yes we can do that uh, if it was an external table so i would say that would be a benefit but now with this unity catalog uh, enabled workspaces the latest versions i would say we have a command called undrop table so now databricks supports this undrop table command is available but there is a retention period for this and the retention period is 7 days so i'll just show you the link as well undrop table command supports an ex manage table it supports an a manage table and the retention period is for 7 days for the 7 days so you can go back now that is a advantage but in the external table it is not supported and the benefits of the manage table is optimization so when it comes to manage table predictive optimization is supported now what do you mean by predictive optimization so i'll just get inside this and it supports the uh, okay dropping a manage table yeah predictive optimization so if you are aware of the delta because it's by default a delta table so we used to optimize those uh, delta logs because uh, like when each and every transaction you are doing it there will be a delta logs created so to optimize them we used to run a command called optimize vacuum we used to do z ordering and all those things but now you don't need to worry about all the things behind the scene uh, there would be a pretty optimization running it so automatically the optimize command will run for you vacuuming will also run for you so if your data files are unused or are stale files those all files will be removed by running the vacuum automatically you don't need to worry about optimizing your delta tables especially in the case of manage tables but in the external table uh, so we do not have this uh, predictive optimization supported automatically you have to do it all manually so that is the disadvantages of the external table so when you are using databricks completely for all your data workloads databricks recommends using a manage table that will help you a lot see if you uh, like previously we used to drop a table we won't we was not getting a table back i mean we were not able to do a retrieve or rollback for the table but now with this undrop table command you would easily get your table back and optimization is done automatically so you don't need to worry about the external tables now so databricks recommends using a manage table only okay and i have shown you i have explained you the benefits as well when you compare it to the manage table so yeah i have created a table now i'm not going to create an external table because again i have to uh, make a connection to my external cloud storage and so on okay so but you can do it in the same way just mentioning the location now i would like to show you a demo on if i drop a table uh, so let me just run a drop table table name and i should go back to the catalog explorer and confirm that there is no table now there is no sample table here you can see it's dropped now uh, even the metadata and everything gets dropped now we have this undrop table command that will help you to get your table back so i'll just run it and wow we can see and within few seconds uh, we have got a table back i'll do a refresh and cool you can see your sample data is here a sample table is here if i go to history i should see the same create table command but it has a limitation uh, the retention period for this uh, command is for seven days remember that then we have uh, details it's a managed table and it still has the uh, location and so on so i have enabled this predictive optimization at the catalog level so that's the reason why it is inherited from the catalog called youtube okay so this was all about the managed table and external table with the databricks unity catalog enabled workspace i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the content please subscribe to my channel and please share it with your friends thank you for watching my video again keep learning see you bye bye